What's going on, guys? My name is Steve. Thank you for stopping by my channel. I'm just an American guy on a journey to discover my British and Irish ancestry. Today, we're going to be reacting to the biggest supermarket in London. How much will it cost? From what I understand, this is a video about going and shopping at Tesco. I've heard about Tesco, but I don't really know anything about it. This will actually be the first time I've actually seen the inside of a British grocery store. Uh, so I really don't know what to expect. I'm guessing it's going to look similar to, you know, American grocery stores in some ways and in other ways, it's going to be very different. Um, you know, considering this says it's the biggest supermarket in London, I'm not really sure if this is something like a Costco in America or if it's just like a regular grocery store. Um, that's just, I think it is a, a big chain, but I'm not really sure exactly if it's kind of one of those discount supermarkets or if it's just like a regular grocery store. Please let me know in the comments uh, which one it is, or she'll probably talk about it on here. But anyways, guys, let's go ahead and check out the biggest supermarket in London. Anyway, I am off to, I'm gonna go to Tesco, which is apparently the biggest um, supermarket in London. That's what Google says, I don't know the square footage, but we're gonna go with it. So I'm gonna go down um, saying that. I don't know exactly how to get there because you're my sat nav. I just generally don't go to a big supermarket, it's effort, and I just had some time this morning before seeing my friends later. And I'm just so used to just going tap, 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 and then you pay like a few quid for delivery. But I kind of felt like actually going to a supermarket, so it feels a bit weird. You don't tend to do that in the city. I might do this as like a little bit of a series, might go to Whole Foods next week. I may have gone the wrong way. Wait, you guys have Whole Foods? I didn't know that. Okay. So I'm, so far I'm guessing that Tesco, let me see. Uh, okay, yeah, she's uh, just basically got this intro here, but yet yeah, uh, the grocery store starts in just a moment. Um, but it sounds like Tesco is kind of like a regular grocery store, not necessarily a discount grocery store like Costco is in America or Sam's Club, for example. But it sounds like it's just kind of a regular grocery store that happens to be really large, at least in London. Are the Tesco's always really large? Like, wherever they are. I know there are more of them because I've heard of Tesco before. Well, at least I think they're outside of London as well, but I'm not really 100% sure about that. Do I have to pay for parking? What? Wait, you have to, there is a, there is a parking garage to go to the grocery store. They have their own parking garage. That's something I've never seen at a grocery store. Okay, even Costco's don't have a parking garage. They generally just have they have a large parking lot, but although it is London, so maybe maybe that's the reason for the parking garage because uh, they needed the space. So that that kind of makes sense, I guess. If Tesco's are outside of London as well, do they do they have parking garages in other areas Tesco's are in as well, or is that just kind of because London's kind of a bigger city? Oh guys, we kept my car washed. How much is it? We are in like Fulham, Chelsea. No, where are we? Kensington. Hi. Okay. I'm good, thanks. You can car in your car park anywhere. Over an hour wait. <laughs> Maybe wait. not. Made it to Tesco. Right, I'm going to use you as my camera on my phone. Sorry, I keep looking at myself. Did she say an um, hour wait? Let's go get some food. Okay, I guess not. All right. I want to see that front. Hold on, hold on. Let's go get some food. Harvest by British farmers. Okay, cool. By the way, one thing I already notice is that the carts look different. I don't know if that's the way carts normally look in. Um, where where is it? Let's Myself. see. Um, let's go get some food. Right here. Yeah, the carts look quite different from what I'm used to seeing in American grocery stores. I don't know if this is the normal looking cart everywhere, but it definitely looks different from what I'm used to. They actually look nicer. Or maybe this is just a Tesco cart. Hello? Oh, that's... Wait. What is that? Oh. So you can just go... You can just go and scan the item as you go around to shopping. And then when you get done, you basically... I guess it's paid for automatically. So can you pay cash there at all? Or is it just all... Um, scanning and then you just walk out i've never seen that 
got a little click and collect section there as well. This is why I don't usually go to supermarkets in London because there's just always some. But drama aside, they've got this big summer section. I cannot believe I have not had alcohol. I don't know. I want to see some of these prices. I don't really recognize. Well, this is Pepsi. That's one pound for something, some amount of Pepsi. And then they got Pringles down here. I recognize Pringles, obviously. Uh, 65, 50. In probably about okay. five weeks, but I probably have broken this by the time I've watched this because it's actually my birthday as you're watching this. Well, it was probably my birthday the day before. So um, yeah, I hope I had a nice birthday. <laughs> And part of my slightly healthier eating, oh, the dates on these aren't great. Um, I'm gonna grab corn on the cob and I'm gonna also get some broccoli once I see it. I love watermelon. Oh my gosh, maybe this isn't a good idea while I'm vlogging. I need to scan this. So then you can see, oh. yeah, when I scan my club card, it's gonna be 250, sorry, 225 for the watermelon and then 129, just a normal price for the corn on the cob twin pack. 129? Watch it as you go along. You can delete things. I wish I could remember what the difference between pound and, and U.S. dollars right now. Roughly the conversion rate. It changes every day, but I wish I knew the rough. I think is you. I think that means that the corners cost probably the equivalent of around a dollar fifty, uh, which is actually pretty good. And the watermelon. This watermelon. I don't know what time of the year this was recorded. Probably during the summer or sometime it seems, but. This watermelon probably be about, eh, probably about $5 in the US. So this is obviously cheaper. This is probably about $3, it seems like. So yeah. As a kid, I always hated tomatoes, but I feel like now I'm like- 1.30. Um, How do you say that? 1.30 pounds? So there's one, one pound and 30 pence or something like that. Um, and then 1.70, that's actually a really good price. I think it's actually cheaper with this card. Are these all the same? Wow. Yeah, let's get... There we go. And then I also did pick up some kale as well. Everyone always loves seeing all like the ready-made stuff that we have in the UK. I mean, gum powder potatoes, they look quite good. Um, yes, yeah, so this is just the potato section. Obviously got some nice roasted That's just veg, the potato section? Mushrooms, um, this fire pit brand. I don't think it's, yeah, exclusively for Tesco. Well, that triple grain salad looks good, doesn't it? That's not too bad for 250. And of course, okay. it's the right time to be buying strawberries. But I think I might buy. So maybe this is in the summer too much. Actually, go out of date within about three seconds. It's not as busy as I thought it was going to be. I was actually going to go to Lidl, um, which is a little bit further north or that one of London. Too. I probably will pop there anyway and do my shop at some point. But yeah, let me know if you want to see that. I'm interested to see what you get for I don't know 30, 40 quid at Lidl and Aldi actually. And I might as well get some actual Wait, mixed quid. leaf. Salady there's things. Pence. I mean, honestly, I think there's the amount pounds, of mixed salad I've thrown away. I don't know what a quid is. Um, I don't really know what a pence is either. On holiday a few times. I'm just trying to predict how many comments I get about how much plastic we have in the UK. I mean, just these mushrooms and not even kind of plastic wow. card with plastic. It's like full on plastic. Oh, there's some posh, posh mushrooms. Yeah, that, that is something that I'm noticing is there it does seem to be a lot of plastic. Um, I mean, we obviously have, you know, America has a lot of plastic, you know, stuff, foods wrapped in or whatever. But usually in America, like, like when you look at mushrooms and things like that, generally speaking, the the trays they come in are is more of like a cardboard, and then it's got plastic wrap on the top. Generally speaking, this is definitely more sturdy. Definitely, uh, yeah. Mushroom. You can get like really little salads, but I find that these are actually really terrible value. I've been making my own dressing. I find wow, that was a good price. Garlic, salt and pepper, and a squeeze of lemon is quite a nice dressing. I always like seeing bananas paid by weight rather than individual. Um, in my area, I mean, it probably. I've never seen bananas paid individually. That's always a uh, by the weight here in America. I noticed uh, 78 pence. Is that the. Is a pence the British version of one cent in America? Granted, I know that it would be a different conversion rate, but I'm saying like the, like would it take a hundred pence to equal one pound? Is that what that means? Because if it is, that's that's actually pretty expensive for bananas uh, because 78 pence per pound, I think it was. Uh, if I'm thinking correctly, wouldn't that be around 90, 90 cent or a dollar? in america i'm not sure exactly but uh 
I think the bananas are around 58 cent per pound here. So that, that might actually be one thing that could be cheaper in America. I haven't seen many, but for somehow, somehow that's probably because a lot of bananas are shipped directly up uh, through the border from, from South America. And so they don't have to be shipped overseas. That's probably what that is. It cost me money was to get here with my um, yeah detour. Let's get four bananas. They're Wonder where those come from. Banana, but these probably will end up being I don't know maybe like sixteen. I'm gonna have to get my list. Oh, that was so cool. Into- so like. So some things you that you need by weight, you just go to that the way, the scale and you actually print out like a ticket and then you scan the ticket. That's so crazy. I've never seen anything like that. This is like the grocery store of the future. To the fish section, um, and it's really nice because it doesn't actually smell like fish. Mastercraft butchers here. Well, this is a really nice uh, Tesco. Oh, Scottish beef T-bone steak for thirteen pound. Obviously done on weight. Oh, I feel like this stuff is a proper treat. Oh, I haven't really thought about this. Maybe I should get one of these. That's it. Three point two three pounds, or however you worth that, just over three pounds. In the shop, that would help. Eight pounds for that. It's a um, lamb. Hmm. Rob steak. Oh, ribeye for eight twenty. Ribeye's the best, isn't it? Or sirloin? Which one's better? Do you know what? I'm gonna get that and. Yeah, and then you've got lots of pre-made. Oh, I can just hear all the Americans going, what on earth? Um, I mean, this is not a normal Tesco thing. I think that's pretty fair to say. Beef bombs, 440, stuffed with... Uh- wow. I mean, granted, I know, I think I think pound, the, the conversion rate, the pound is, uh, you know, the. I, I think this is more U.S. dollars than what the pound says. I think the U.S. dollar goes up, if you understand what I'm saying. Um, but I think this is like around $5 or so, right? That's a really good price for something like that. Um, cream cheese with some seasoning, beef stir fry, five fifteen. get a decent amount there. And then you've even got some Thai style chicken stir fry, beef bavette. Oh my gosh, a brisket. I don't think I've ever really had beef brisket and they've even got some pork ribs ready come to on two wow. three pounds basically they've got a plant and vegetarian that's section. insane um, probably all the standard things that we see a lot in the uk now that vivera brand come on Wiki, man uh, corn for example it's so interesting to come here when i'm so used to like small stores. Wait, what that is well, i don't know what that is but it's a huge serving and it's only just a little over five pounds Jerk, is that jerk chicken? I think that might be because this is, yeah, jerk chicken. Wow. I don't know how much that weighs, but that is that is a large amount for basically five pounds. Wow. It was like massive packets of like stuff ready to go. Obviously, you need to cook it first. Now into the fish section, and this is usually what I get. I uh, get what? really one of the sea bass. Let me just see what they've got maybe lemon sole i don't feel like i've had that in a really long time i usually go for stuff where it's got like a little bit of seasoning or something going on so just notice this one up here we've got a lime chili uh chili and lime infused salmon fillet i'm also going to grab this mediterranean sea bass because i bought this ages ago and i've never been able to find it i must say this type of food was honestly most of my diet the last like 10 years but i'm being Honestly, I don't think is that big a deal in America. That would probably be a problem if this prepared these this prepackaged prepared food was a huge part of your diet. Eventually, that would catch up with you because a lot of the ingredients and stuff aren't very good. But from what I understand and what I've learned about the food in UK in general and the regulations that are involved with what's allowed in the food. I have a feeling the ingredient list would look fairly clean to me. And looking at these prices, I'm I'm shocked, really. I mean, uh, I don't know if these, I don't know if Tesco is known to be, you know, what price range it normally is compared to other grocery stores in the UK. But so far, w- what I see is an American looking at these prices. It, it's this is this is amazing. <laughs> this is this is great. Like this right here in America would probably be, I'm going to say, I don't know, $7 or something like that. I mean, this is, this is like big, big, uh, 
big deal to see prices this low. Granted, I don't know when this was filmed. I don't. I think it was this year though. So. I'm trying really hard to like not eat as much like processed food. Um, but yeah, Actually, yeah, it was about. Just have a lot of stuff. I think it was like, like six months ago or something. So box, around the summertime. The oven. So I do yeah. I love these kind of like trays. So you get like yeah, a spatchcock chicken for five pound twenty. Whack it in the oven, serves four. There we go. There's another one there that's right up my wow. street. Wow. Um, but I just obviously that's not full on processed. Actually, something that I would like to get, and I've been having as part of my breakfast. Look how clean um, that I is. Two. Two eggs. Did you see that? Like this is this is pretty interesting how clean this looks. I don't know if that's just this shelf right here, but like when I look at the grocery stores a lot of times in America, uh, you know, this these shelves don't ever get clean, but it looks like they actually clean the shelves. Granted, I know if you go to somewhere like Whole Foods, it's, you're gonna have a little bit better uh experience, but if Tesco's anywhere something like um a regular grocery store, generally speaking, you know, uh, I haven't had the best experience with cleanliness on the shelves and stuff like this. But this could just be because it's prepackaged stuff, though. Scrambled or poached, but I've been buying this brand Heck, which I was told by Heck. someone ages ago is like the best, what is and the favorite? healthiest way what to have that? sausages. Sausage. Um, I'm not telling you what to eat, but I'm just letting you know what I'm. Oh. Um... Chicken chip. What's. Why is this the. Uh, Healthiest way to have sausage. I don't think. What is at is hold on, made in small batches because we're big on flavor and quality. I don't really understand what's so different about it, but uh, sausage, there's, it's great. It's good for you. I mean, it's it's a you know. I personally believe that all whole foods are good for you, as you know, generally speaking buying but not the pork oh they're not on offer they're on offer quite often um yeah that's quite funny because they're three pound in my local tesco but you only get six but you get ten here so that's quite good yeah our bacon is amazing and this oh this jolly hog oh, oh. that bacon is probably hold up man okay that's oh wait hold on 13.75 per kilogram all right that can't remember how many kilograms are in a pound but hold on is that 2.2 kilograms per pound, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. If that's the case, that's roughly, I don't know, about six pounds per, six pounds per pound, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying, if I'm thinking correctly here. So that's actually, okay, that's, that's, that's a decent price. That's not that's not as over the top great of a price as I've seen, but that's actually pretty good. Oh wait, no, 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 no. That is actually really good. What am I thinking? Usually it's about six dollars per half a pound, per eight ounces of bacon in America. So we would be paying about roughly eh. You can get it on the low end around five fifty per pound and in a regular grocery store. And this is not anything special. Bacon. This is bacon with all sorts of nitrates and nitrites and things like that in it. So um, to get good quality bacon, you're probably paying around $8 per or $7 per half a pound at the grocery store. I can get it for around $8 per pound because I go directly to a local farmer. Uh, but uh, at the grocery store, you're, I mean, it looks like you're paying quite a bit less here uh, for a pound of bacon from the grocery store because I can't even get that price going to my farmer, which is much cheaper than what I'd find in the grocery store. Amazing. We're just right by the door. So they've got this kind of like grab and go section. Yeah, with all some of the obviously most popular cheeses that you can grab for your evening. You can grab whatever you need and then some Wow, olives. man. You can make a nice little a little board, can't you? This is oh, great. Meats Seriously. Are my absolute favorite. Even um, some little yeah Mediterranean things on the end obviously finish off with some champagne and wine this is a really nice tesco we've got this nice cafe harris and whole who and we've got clothing upstairs beige picky bits um i don't need oh, any because we're not going on a picnic or anything anytime soon but just as an example um yeah you've got finest range of different pies sausage rolls uh pork pies or oh, love a pork pie definitely a treat. wow um, dude yeah we just like a lot of like processed things ready for a picnic like a quiche good cold or warm and then these are really good I got to admit, I'd like to see the ingredient list on some of this prepackaged stuff because 
I understand there's, the, you know, obviously there's going to be some ingredients that probably aren't whole food type ingredients. There's going to be some, you know, you know, addition, so to speak. But from what I understand, you guys don't really allow all the yellow five and red 10, all these like artificial food colorings, not just food dyes, but like actually toxic food colorings and things like that in the food from what I've, from what I've learned. Um, I guess I could be wrong on that, but if I'm not wrong on that, and that is the case that the food, uh, that a lot of this stuff is not allowed in the food. Um, I don't really think the prepackaged stuff would be that bad for you. I don't know. I'd have to see, I'd really have to look at the ingredient list of some of this stuff, but I have no doubt that most of the stuff is much healthier for you than what you'd find in America. If it was the exact same prepackaged meal or food, uh, the ingredient list would be completely different here in America. Uh, these mini satays, I went through a phase, kept buying them. And what is a them. satay? Not really Never realizing that. that they probably weren't too healthy, but cocktail sausages, I think, are my personal favorite. And again, another massive section for ready meals that are plant based, plant -based. and vegan. And that brand Bowl is quite a big one over here now. Microwave burgers and hot dogs. My absolute favorite food, with, along with steak, is pizza. So we always have loads of Pizza Express products. Um, I think they now do slightly bigger pizzas because these individual pizzas, I don't know, I feel like they're not. Yeah, I started to say they're not too big, but looking at the price, I don't. Oh, that. Oh, that's without the card. Okay, so without the card, this is probably about what you expect for a kind of low quality frozen pizza here in America. I don't know what kind of quality this pizza is. I don't know if this would be considered a good quality frozen pizza, or if this would be kind of a really junky frozen pizza. But this is what you would expect to pay for uh, kind of your average middle of the road. Uh, pizza. Nothing like, nothing great, but not the worst quality one, but uh, in the middle kind of. Uh, but two fifty. That's that's a really good price either way. Or that's not two dollars fifty cent, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, what is in that two pounds fifty pence, or is that two pounds fifty quid? I'm so lost on the pence quid thing. Not big enough. Tesco finest ones. I think out of all the supermarkets, including MS, uh, Buffalo mozzarella one there on the left is absolutely fantastic. And if you want to be a little bit healthier, I do this over so often. They are obviously more expensive, three pounds, but you can get like the small one and it's like 500 calories, which I don't think is too bad. Obviously, you get quite no, a it's crust, not, but that's quite a good way. It's a nice um, little without kind of like low calorie lunch. So it is endless ready meals along this aisle. Charlie Bingham's is always a like kind of more premium one that's on the top shelf there, and then everything else is pretty much own label that's what our supermarkets are like but there's always a, a meal deal and this is what i mean i think i want to say tesco were maybe one of the first doing plus it plus dessert plus drink. again you've got to have one of those club mm. cards you get a main a side a dessert and a drink so let me just give you an example so you'll get uh dinner to two some ranch steaks so you're not going to get like sirloin steaks um or maybe whatever this chicken thing is t chicken tagine and then you'll get a side um like some rabbit chips Rabbit and chips. then you'll get a dessert. It's usually like a pack of two. Oh, that's so cool, man. There, little millionaire's tarts. That's well, so cool. Cheesecake moments, you'll get two. And then you'll get one pack of these. So you'll get a pack of six of Cokes, which is pretty generous, actually. Or a bottle of wine. Um, and then if not, you can get a double bottle of some sparkling crisp, um, I don't know, fizzy something or other. I don't tend That's so cool. It's like um, it's like an easy way to come and get a full full meal with dessert and everything and drinks and uh, like at one time just go in there real quick run in if you're if you're in a hurry and just grab 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 and out you go like i've never seen that in an american supermarket and that's another thing i i wanted to ask i see people in the uh you know in the comments of other food videos i've done talking about grocery prices and stuff uh, generally speaking it seems like people in the UK generally call, you know, food stores, supermarkets, almost always. I don't know if I've ever seen someone in the comments call it a grocery store. Is there a difference between UK supermarkets and UK grocery stores? Or is just generally speaking, you guys don't use the term grocery store that often and you generally use supermarket because I'm not really sure if there's a difference there. If it's just, you know, just the you know, just a way we speak differently between the two countries. But in America, generally speaking, I very rarely ever see the word supermarket used as generally grocery store. 
So I'm just curious if that a thing. Uh, but anyway, that that last thing was really cool. Um, that that would be very convenient to have. Uh, you know, certain days. I to buy juices, although I do love them. Having orange juice just reminds me of being on holiday. Yeah, I like orange juice. I don't drink it very often. But... Because I will literally drink the whole thing. And um, many years ago when I was a teenager and I had quite bad skin, um, the dermatologist was like, stop drinking orange juice. So I just find if I don't drink fruit juices, um, my skin's a little bit better, even now in my ripe age. <laughs> and being Brits, this is the tea section. I don't think I really need any teas. Um, but yeah, this is a mix of... This would be tea, interesting to check out. Teas, because we're going into a little hot chocolate and coffee section i don't usually buy lots. that would be an interesting session to check out definitely something i want to check out when i visit the uk because i know tea is so big over there that uh much bigger than here is here is in uh the u.s but um so i'm curious on like how big the tea section is in your average grocery store and do you guys generally like to get kind of the loose tea uh like that i don't even know if that's a thing over there because, you know, most of the tea you consume, from what I understand, isn't really herbal teas. They're more like actual, I don't even know what you call it. Would we consider an English breakfast tea is what the normal everyday tea is for people in the UK? I don't really know. Uh, so definitely, definitely, that's something I need to look into as well. But, um, you know, I, I've done quite a bit of herbal tea uh, off and on uh, for different, you know, sleep and things like that. I really enjoy a good herbal tea for different, you know, relaxation and whatnot. Um, but... I can't say I'm huge on just drinking tea during the day or anything. It's just never been, I've honestly never been a beverage person. Um, you know, I'm not the type of person that really drinks beverages. I, I generally just drink water all day. And uh, I have a, I usually have like a smoothie or something during the day. Usually I consider my smoothie my lunch. You know, I have breakfast and then I drink my lunch as kind of like a smoothie, like a kind of like a, it's a shake with milk peanut butter, chocolate, or cow cow, uh, banana, you know, or things like that. Sometimes they mix it up and have berries or whatever. But anyway, that's that's not what this video is about. But uh, just saying I've I've just never been a beverage person, really. It's just not something that, like, I crave, you know, generally speaking. Maybe I've just never had good tea or good, uh, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. This is oat milk, huh? I don't think I would do oat milk. I, I, I like my dairy. I, I like I like regular milk. I get my milk from a local farmer and it's delicious grass fed raw milk. You can't beat it. It's just it's great. Uh, you know, it's not that stuff you find in the grocery store, generally speaking. Um, although you can get some decent milk in the grocery store. You can get some grass fed milk in the grocery store, some grocery stores, but it's harder to come by. So I generally like to, uh, you know, get my milk uh, from a local farmer whenever possible long life milk um but i kind of want to get some oat milk just so i've got it maybe vanilla would be quite nice i can pop it in the cupboard i'm one of those crazy people who i love normal milk i like whole milk i'll drink a glass of milk like i'm that crazy but i went through a what? phase where i was drinking quite a lot of oat milk not really realizing that obviously it's very carb heavy because it's oats and i'm trying to like cut down on my carb intake so um yeah we'll give that one a go and any well I mean, regular milk is fairly carb heavy as well, you know, the lactose. Uh, but I, I think that uh, to me, the problem with oat milk would be the massive amount of uh, phytates, you know. Uh, phytates are mineral robbing for the body. So when you could, you know, I, I eat oatmeal and stuff uh, sometime, but like something like is, you know, taking oats and turn it into like a milk form. I'm guessing that the phytate content is extremely high in that. And a little bit of phytates, there's no problem. There are phytates in a lot of plant foods, you know, um, a lot of, you know, grains and beans and nuts and seeds and things like that. But it's one of those things that can cause a lot of trouble for a lot of people over the long run because the phytates go in the body and they latch onto minerals and they don't allow you to absorb miner cert certain minerals into the body. I think uh, magnesium is one of those, which is very important. Calcium, uh, phosphorus, some other minerals. Um, so when I learned that, I kind of, you know, it can be really bad for the teeth to consume a lot of phytate rich food. Um, I think I was consuming a lot of phytate rich food in the past and what is what led me to having some dental issues uh, a number of years ago. And so it's one of those things that I I'm just mentioning because she brought up oat milk. So uh, definitely not part of this video. So let's continue.
Any Brits watching, don't worry, I don't put it in my tea. I use normal milk for my tea. We have got some dairy milk flapjacks. These are the types of containers that you like used to bring into like the office Hot when you used to be in the office, but there's always like a combo deal, obviously again with a club card. So if you're maybe coming to visit, um, these are always good for kids. I used to always get these for my nieces, actually, the little gingerbread um, kit, but it's everything from like muffins, cookies, flapjacks, um, cornflake clusters you have obviously loads of jam donuts with actual jam inside or jelly um, which is amazing and then there's always different tierings of cookies so you've obviously got your one pound one so you get five in a pack then you've for got a this pound? cookie brand, which I don't know. Would a five in a pack vegan, for a pound? That brand is vegan. What? And then you have like the finest <laughs> ones, which are like one pound sixty-five for four. So why am I doing this to myself? I'm starving. Almond I'm getting hungry now. My you made me favorite. hungry. So you're two for one forty-five. Loads of good be beige items, but I do have to say, look at that packaging. Oh. That is ridiculous. Yeah, okay, okay yeah. Stock issue. Um, yeah, this is a <laughs> that's a little bit much on packaging, uh, but. Uh, Wow, these these prices are amazing. But do they need to be in those plastic tubs? Definitely not. But we don't have like loads of um, kind of fresh birthday cakes or anything like that. But we've got lots of bread. Krispy Kreme donuts, I'd say they are in a lot of stores now. They're in most of the Tesco's, even the little stores near me. So yeah, you've got six minis for £6.25. What have we got over here? Donut bites, eight for £4.25. And then the full uh, share a dozen is £13.95. And we also love a pre -packed That's a really good price. Absolutely love it. If you're going to go for any, look out for either, I'd say, personal toys, anything Cadbury related. So like something like this would be awesome. Or anything with Mr. Kipling. That's a really, really big brand here. Just trying to see if there's anything new that I haven't seen before. But I quite like that the packaging in some cases has got little windows so you can see what you're getting. Oh my gosh. Angel cake though. Proper dirt cheap. £1.45 is incredible. Angel cake. Back. Let's not touch it. Absolutely love in America, I don't know, know what this means, but there's angel cake and there's devil devil's food cake, I think. I have no idea what the difference between those things are. I, I'm just I've had both and I'm curious is do you guys have the devil's cake or devil's food cake there along with the angel cake? And are they the same thing? What does that even mean? You know, I I don't even really know what the two different the differences are. Ground almonds, flaked almonds. Of flaked almonds, they're always in the cooking section. And our eggs do not need to go in the fridge. I want to clap on that one. Yay, good job. Because uh, that's something that's always been a pet peeve of mine in America. We wash, they wash Maybe the I'll eggs. Maybe video in grocery stores. kind of crazy British things that we have. Let me know if you want to see that. But something like this, full Monty. So you're getting baked beans, sausages, potatoes, mushrooms, bacon burgers, and mini beef. Wow, cut, all in one. For one pound sixty. I'm not buying it. I'm putting it back. But yeah, that's a whole meal, man. That's a that's a hearty it's meal, like a man. Huge section for baked beans as well. I am not allowed down this aisle because I have given up crisps. Dude, did was that like literally an entire section of baked bean? I mean, she said that, but are is literally is this an entire shelf? I mean, like I mean, this entire row is that all baked beans? Wow. I know you guys love well. You know, that's definitely something that is known to be loved in the UK. I've obviously, I started to say you guys, but not everybody, I guess, is going to love baked beans. But as a whole, it seems like that's a very popular staple item. And, um, but wow, if this is an entire row of nothing but baked beans, that is impressive. Uh, you know, generally speaking, in America, you might have you have a few different types of baked beans, but then the rest of the aisle might be just all sorts of different types of beans because a lot of different types of beans are eaten here. You know, you got pinto, and you got then you got the peas, the black eyed peas, navy beans, on and on and on. Um, which I guess you guys all have those same beans as well there. Well, I am not allowed down this aisle because I have given up crisps. Oh, I love crisps, crisps. so much, but crisps don't love me. And someone did ask me to show you the ice cream. Mm. Um, this brand, Carte d'Or, if I'm pronouncing that right, is a really Kelly's. popular one in the UK, but we tend to have a mixture of kind of premium. That's interesting. Oh, this is Tesco brand. Um, I've never seen ice cream in a clear carton. And this looks like a plastic carton. That's so interesting. Hmm. Is this a, a normal thing or is this just kind of like just a Tesco thing? It might just be a Tesco thing because these others aren't, you know, they're they're not clear. So 
um, own label. Own label's really good. I know I've definitely shown these Tesco ice creams before. They're very, very popular. And then we tend to have, there's usually some kind of, yeah, oh, Cornish, there's some Cornwall um, hmm. vanilla uh, dairy there. Cornwall and some dairy. More entry price point ones. But as I pan up, we obviously have a lot of brands oh, that wow. has around the world. So interested to hear whether these prices are what you pay. And of course, Cadbury have got something going on Cadbury in there. Cadbury well. ice cream. Sorbet, I would love to try that. Popular thing here. I would love I to try that. I am really basic, and I would definitely buy something like Madagascan vanilla, like absolute love. And then Halo Top, which has probably gone from zero to 100 in the space of about, you know, two years. That's obviously a really popular ice cream brand because it's kind of technically a low calorie, um, yeah, ice cream brand, and they've always got lots of different ones. But we do also have quite a lot of vegan offerings now, um, all around London, even in my small. I don't think the, uh, I mean, I think the ice cream is, uh, I mean, it's not over the top cheap compared to American, but it's still not like more expensive, really. It's just, uh, seems like some of these brands, like the Ben and Jerry's, maybe that's because of the American brand, so it's a little bit more expensive. But as a whole, it seems like even the ice cream, though it might be a little bit more closer to the cost you'd find in America, still not even, still haven't even caught up with the with the price there. <laughs> Tesco. So we have a pretty decent selection of wow. little ice creams and lollies. I love mini yeah, milks. Yeah, those, those are good prices right there. They're super yummy. Wow. I did have some fabs in my freezer, which obviously melted, so they went in the bin. Little moons in stock. <laughs> Do you remember last year? Little they went moons. crazy and everyone wanted them. <laughs> and then obviously you got different types of magnums as well. I love a magnum. I did my best filming, guys. But yeah, let me know if you want me to kind of come to a store and show you like all the crazy British stuff, which I'm not going to buy because I don't want to waste the, you know, food and money. But yeah, this is my shop. Usually this fast tracks you because you just kind of scan it on the top of the tail, but it looks like they've got it combined with their trolley self-service, but never mind. I've actually just bagged it quickly while I was waiting, which is fine. If there's any issue there, we'll basically randomly spot check people. Everything's scanned okay. Okay, then you go. There you go. And because I'd scanned everything, I didn't need to no. put it here. So home time. Wow. Okay. That was that was pretty awesome. Um definitely gave me a good overview of at least Tesco because I'd heard of Tesco. I know it's a popular grocery store chain. I don't know if it's like Costco or not here in America, but Costco kind of has everything kind of like a Walmart, but much bigger. So I'm guessing it's not really like a Costco. So maybe it's just a huge grocery store. I guess that's what it is, um, which is really interesting. I can't think of anything really to compare it to in America. Granted, this could be a big version of a Tesco compared to other areas in the UK, maybe in, in different towns and cities that may have Tesco. Maybe they're, they may be smaller in some areas, and this is just because it's London. It's much bigger. That could be what, that, what the difference is here, I guess. Um, but, guys, did I see that price right? Um, where are you at? No way. Okay. We're talking just under 49 pounds. Let me, let me, I got to look at this card. Where's her card at? I was right. Under 50 pounds. This means that I don't really know what the conversion rate is, but I'm going to guess this is around $60, somewhere around $60. If I went to the grocery store, just a regular grocery store, and I got all that, I'm going to guess that would probably cost me $150, like straight up. Like, like that's, that's a lot of food. I mean, you, you, you got steaks over here. You got all sorts of different package stuff and, and like just, you know, a lot of different things. I, I don't know. I'm going to say, I, I'll go, I say it could possibly be 120. I'm going to say it's going to be somewhere between 120 and 150. So it looks like from Tesco, it looks like I would probably pay double for the same prices. One, I don't know if this is like what you see in a normal like UK grocery store. But one thing that I couldn't help but notice when I look at this entire, from the time she entered the store, um, it's just everything was packaged so nicely. Now, I will admit, uh, I will agree with her. Some of this stuff, like uh, when you looked at, I don't even know where it was, but like, I think it was like the donuts or cookies or something. Um, it seemed like there was way too much plastic packaging compared to what you were getting that's kind of a you know it's kind of a waste it's you know going to go into the the landfill or whatnot i guess i don't know i guess um 
I guess, uh, I don't know, do you guys recycle those plastic containers? I don't know. I don't think they would allow that here in America, that type of plastic container. I don't know. I'd have to look into that. But uh, they don't around here. We can recycle like uh, paper products, glass, cans, cardboard, certain plastics, but other plastics are off limits. I, so I don't know. But uh, I absolutely appreciate like how clean this the shelving looked and how organized everything was. And just like I said, the packaging, it's like, this is just amazing. Like the packaging is just on point. And then the prices are excellent. I mean, this is amazing. I don't know the exact conversion rate, like I, like I said, but I know roughly this is probably $4, maybe a little bit less right around that. And I mean, that's excellent. So I don't know what you guys would consider these prices that you're seeing through this video. I don't know if these are, are good prices to you or not as great prices. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how expensive or cheap Tesco normally is, but either way, just know as a guy that is from America, uh, that actually I don't live in a place where the grocery prices are over the top expensive because, you know, generally speaking, it's not, I don't live in somewhere like, New York City or LA or something like that. I live in a pretty small town, really. Um, and so the grocery store prices are going to be pretty average or on the lower end in this area of America compared to a lot of other areas, right? And to me, these prices are like, I almost everything I saw, I would expect to pay probably double. Some things maybe even triple on. Uh, a few things like the, some of the ice cream, like the Ben and Jerry's and stuff, I think it was starting to approach the prices I probably would see for those items. But as a whole, I would expect to pay for what she got. I would expect to pay double, maybe more for what she what she bought. I mean, the food selection that the store had. I mean, I can go to stores that have plenty of food selection. That's not what I'm saying. But like how I understand that the ingredient lists are probably going to be cleaner. Uh, I, I love the packaging and the, the way it's just kind of uh, organized and and just the the price of these just all together. Um, I really think I would fully enjoy um, at least Tesco. Um, you know, even down to the way you pay is pretty cool. Um, but uh, yeah, guys, I really enjoyed this video. I thought she I know it's probably aggravating to probably go along and. Um, try to, you know, film this video while she was shop grocery, actually do grocery shopping, but um, she did a good job uh, showing a large selection of the different things in here. Give me, gave me a good idea of what I could see in at least a Tesco. Let me know in the comments if this is like your average, like what you'd find at your average grocery store with the prices, with the packaging, with the organization and things like that, and the prepackaged foods and just all the things that she discussed and showed on this video, is this what an average grocery uh, UK grocery store would look like? Or would I check in out other grocery stores, other grocery store chains in, in the UK? Would I find something vastly different uh, in any of those categories? But uh, yeah, guys, uh, thank you so much for stopping by. Please click that like button. Feel free to drop your comments and suggestions about this video or others. And don't forget to subscribe to continue to follow me on my journey to discover my British and Irish ancestry. Until next time, guys. Peace.